Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Before we get started with our friend of the family at ATP, I want to remind everybody in ATP land, if you haven't, please subscribe to our text message alert system so you'll get this and all of our shows absolutely for free, right in the palm of your hand on your cell phone. It's simple. Just text the message TRUTH and send it to the number 88202. Push send, you'll be signed up in about five seconds. You'll get all of our content like this one, absolutely free. And with that, let's bring on our special guest, Annie Cyrus. Uh, she is our publisher and editor of ATP Report. She's the founder of Live Up to Freedom. She is famous around the world as one of the leading escapees from Islamic terror, being sold as a child bride, as a young child. And she is the expert on Islam. Welcome back, Annie. Thank you so much for having me back, Barry. Let's jump right into what's going on in the getting crazier by the day Middle East, starting first in Gaza. A few days ago, uh, a Palestinian father held uh, a, I guess it's his own boy, uh, a young child up to the fence while they were having the annual, or I should say now weekly, rush the fence and invade Israel rally uh, on the weekend. This young child held a revolver, stuck it through the fence, shot blindly, and shot an Israeli border policeman in the head at point blank range. While that was going on, they launched firebombs and fire kites over the fence, and the Israelis, because they're trained not to shoot a child, took the bullet in the head. What kind of writing is there in Islam that justifies this kind of insane behavior by a father to possibly intentionally sacrifice his young son? Well, the hatred for Jews in, in Islam and Sharia goes really deep. The, the evidence is more than one or two or three there are many verses in the Quran referring to Jews in, as monkeys and apes and cursed and all that. And then there is, of course, the very famous um, chapter 9, verse 5, kill them wherever you find them, referring to non-believers, which includes Jews. But the most famous Sharia part of hatred toward Jews, or better yet, you must kill Jews, comes from a hadith in Al-Bukhari. I'm going to actually put it on a screen to make sure nobody thinks we are making this up. If you go to, say, Al-Bukhari, book 52, hadith 176, it flat out right there says, we will fight the Jews until some of them will hide behind stones. The stone will betray the Jews saying, oh, a slave of Allah or Muslim, there is a Jew behind me, so come and kill it. That is the level of you must kill Jews for the last day to arrive. If there is a breathing Jew on earth, Muslims won't even have their day of peace. So that is the level. So there, this father was willing to sacrifice his own child, knowing that possibly Israel or Israelis that were being shot at would defend themselves. and that's a good thing in his mind, literally? Well, here are two, two things, two answers to your question. This father knew the chances of Israeli soldiers shooting the kid is almost zero. And that's the thing, the, the, the Jews are too nice to a fault. They won't accept or they don't want to face the fact that this cult that they're fighting or they're defending their land against, doesn't have the boundaries of children and women, and they don't have those boundaries. So the father almost knew the child is not going to be killed. But even if he didn't, the risks are very well worth it. Because remember, the number one guaranteed spot in Islamic heaven for either a mother or a father is if their child ends up dying in fight for a law. So yes, when somebody's brainwashed enough to think that they have to kill all Jews until the day of peace arrives, they're brainwashed enough to sacrifice their own kids. I mean, Barry, we both know how many Palestinian mothers wrap the uh, suicide bomb around their own kids. 
That, that's where the root of it come from. They go to heaven. Either they die in name of Allah or their kid. It doesn't matter. It's, it's horrifying and it's disgusting. And continuing in this insane behavior commentary, the Taliban, I'm sure you know this, has been shooting women, now that they've taken over Afghanistan, on the streets of Kabul, who are seen on the streets without a burqa. Is this part of Sharia too? Not only this is part of Sharia, this is part of Islam. And let, let's just quickly do this for our audience, just in case one in a million they don't know. Islam is Quran and Sira, life of Muhammad. Sharia is a combination of everything that you can find in a book called Reliance of the Traveler. So what Taliban are doing, killing women for not wearing the burqa, is in both. It's in the Quran, which again, let's make sure we have our evidence ready, you know, very perfect news. So here, the first evidence is on chapter 24, verse 31, where it clearly says, have the believing woman wear their head a scarf down to their chest. So there is no such a thing as, oh no, you know, nobody cares if you wear the hijab or not. Chapter 24, verse 31 establishes the mandatory hijab bearing the head of scarf down to your chest. And then the next evidence is chapter 33, verse 59, where it says, tell the believing woman, your wives, your girls, everybody to wear their hijab and keep their eyes down so they will be known and not assaulted. This is the part. If you're not wearing the hijab, you're not known as a Muslim woman, therefore a Muslim man has the right to either sexually assault you or beat you or kill you for not following Sharia. And you know, it breaks my heart, not only the death of these innocent women, but the world outcry is definitely not there at all, as if nobody cares. Why would they? Exactly. So the barbarity in Kabul has now extended to Christians in a big way. There are reports, this is stunning, of roving Taliban murderers grabbing cell phones from people on the street. And then they look at the cell phone. And if you have a Bible verse on your phone, meaning you're a Christian, any, they're executing these people on the spot for the crime of having an interest in the Bible. Is this part of the religion too? Absolutely. Again, there's always chapter three, verse 151, where Allah himself said, we shall cast terror in the hearts of non-believers. Now, they might argue, as you know, that, oh, under Islam, we believe in Jesus. Christians are accepted. We have no problem with them, but let, let's actually expose that lie. In Quran, chapter 4, verse 171, is where clearly it tells us that Islam does not accept the same Jesus as Christians do. Because right on that, it says, do not say the three or trinity that will be a sin. Uh, I hate to say this, Barry, but I feel like a broken record where I say you're either a Muslim or you're dead. There are enough evidence in the Quran, in the Hadith, in the Sirah that says non-believers are non-Muslims. The moment you're not a Muslim, you are dead unless you're willing to convert, which Taliban is not giving anyone the chance to convert in Afghanistan because on their Sharia, if you do live under the ruling of Sharia and choose to go with a different religion, you have already committed, I think it's apostasy, if I'm pronouncing it correct. And that is absolutely the top line of kill them in Sharia. So these Afghan people are not considered Christians or Jews or non-Muslims. They are apostates. They have left the religion, even though it was forced on them years ago by Muslims. The bad news just keeps getting worse, Annie, out of Afghanistan. President Biden supposedly negotiated a deal with the Taliban that he got for America until August 31 to get all the Americans out and their allies, supporters, and so on. 
Um, the Taliban has just said, quote, beyond August 31, it's a red line, meaning the Taliban has a big problem if Biden doesn't meet the 831 deadline. So for the last year or so in Afghanistan, the Taliban took Trump's threats seriously. Trump said, and it's been confirmed by several sources in the Trump White House, that if the Taliban harmed any Americans or their contractors, he would throw the full force and might of the US military against the Taliban, and in the words I heard, destroy and obliterate them. From the time he said that 18 months ago, Americans haven't been dying in Afghanistan. Biden turned around and said, could we please have a couple of weeks to get our people out, which by the way has not happened. And all of a sudden he's showing weakness instead of strength. And he's trying to be nice instead of tough. It seems that the Taliban only respect force of a Trump instead of weakness of a Biden. Am I correct? You're absolutely correct. Again, remember their own prophet without a prophecy said the heaven is under the shadow of the sword. Muslims are trained to spread fear. They control you through fear. So the moment you give in to the fear and show weakness, they will run you over. But then when you're President Trump, you're like, I'm not afraid of you. When you're President Trump and they attack our embassy in Iraq, literally right away, the leader of them is boom, gone. You're, reverse, you're reversing their own method. That's what President Trump did. President Trump and his advisors quickly came to realize these people will run us over if we show weakness. So he stood up and said, America first, Americans first, you try to touch one of my Americans and I will make sure that you face consequences. Biden, on the other hand, I really don't believe personal opinion. I don't think he's showing weakness. I think he's, co he's showing weakness. I think he's cooperating because he does, as he said two times, Two times he has said, we have negotiated with Taliban. I mean, between me and you, you are way more of an expert in American laws than I am. But I think I'm correct to say we don't negotiate with terrorists, correct? That's always been our policy until the last two weeks. There you go. We are negotiating with terrorists. That is not weakness. That's Biden following the orders of his puppeteers to tell him that we have to hand over Afghanistan because the plan is not going to continue. Call me crazy. This whole thing is started with November 3rd for a reason. Trump put an end to their plan. Trump stopped the Islamization. They had to steal the election, place Biden in the House, in the White House, so they could do what they are doing today. I mean, you, uh, do you, quick question, Mary, do you think for a second Biden has? any idea what he's doing or is he just following orders? Because I don't think he does. I, I, I'm fairly convinced to a high degree of probability, Annie, he reads the teleprompter and he doesn't write what's in the teleprompter. And the reason why he can't answer questions and says at the end of his reading of the teleprompter, I'm told no questions and he's hustled away. He literally, and I mean this word for word, is not in charge and whoever is, loves the new Afghanistan and hates the old position of America first, America with strength and America with a position of leadership and authority. This new America, I don't recognize. Exactly, and, and I was looking on social media, I saw this really chilling picture. I actually have goosebumps just talking about it. There was a picture of President Trump next to Biden the picture of the night that President Trump stayed up until 2 a.m. to welcome the Americans who were released from North Korea. And then there's a picture of Biden walking away to go back to his vacation after the first press release about Afghanistan. And that very, it, it literally made my heart hurt that in short, what, eight months, we gone from that to this. And it seems like our fellow Americans are still asleep. They still don't see it. How much more dramatic and sad it needs to get. And by the way, just an update, 
Taliban, few minutes be before we go on air, they added a new condition to their agreement. We still have until August 31st to get Americans out. But as of today, they will not allow a single Afghan to leave the country. They'll all be, whoever cooperated with the American servicemen in schools, in distribution of food, in uh, help of rehabilitation, in establishing water, uh, and a distribution of clean water and sanitary, they'll all be slaughtered. And the slaughter from what I've read has already started. It's atrocious and the world is silent and the press in America is silent. I'm disgusted and I'm very sad as you are. Annie, tell people how they can get in touch with you and follow what you're doing. Of course, um, those of you who are at American Trust, Truth Project, you can always get my videos. I do regular interviews with Barry at americantruthproject.org, or you can go to my own website, liveuptofreedom.com and get the rest of the things I'm doing almost daily. Perfect. I advise all of you to do that. If you want to learn about the enemy, listen to her. She will teach you and you need this data to not end up like a sheep. And I really mean that. And I want to remind all of you, if you didn't at the start of the show, please do it now. If you're not subscribed, text 88202 on your cell phone. Uh, the message truth, T-R-U-T-H, push send. You'll be signed up and you'll get all of our stuff like this with Annie absolutely for free. Thanks for coming to join us today. For ATP Report, I'm Bernie Newsbaum.